Okay. Everything is running. Seems to be. We can uh, continue. Let's see. Do I have this project open? Just in case. Loading project. Alright. So. We left off on trying to figure out what this ghostly figure would look like. And... I had a I had a bit of an idea. I wanted to see if we can make it look like some faceless creature. Right, just like that. No face, just just the head and the dress. No, not so much scary, maybe more creepy. Creepy or uncanny, I'd say. Animating this is going to be... Oof, <laughs> it's going to be kind of tricky. I have to animate drapery. That would be very challenging. Pius, how's it going? Maybe we're going too much into this cutesy territory with these basic ones. Is the chat so tall? It's kind of weird. Oh, I think because it hasn't reached the minimum minimum comment amount. Actually, what if we do something like this? Battle Zeus, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Well, not as... Not as while as it sometimes takes me, but... Uh, I've been thinking that I should maybe concentrate on... Pushing my, uh... My website, my platform. So, for that, I actually need to work on these projects. And... On the... On the, pay, on the other side, on the payoff, I actually get to... Get these projects out of the way, and get them done, and on the other side, I'm gonna get 
the content for the website done. So, you know, all these live streams, all these development videos are going to go on the website. That one up there. So, you know, got to put in the hours. Ooh, a voodoo doll. Okay. So this is actually kind of creepy looking. I like it. So not so much scary. This is more like more witch-like. Um while this looks more more creepy. Hmm, uncanny I should say. And this is for the um battle. This is for this particular project. I'm trying to find a more or less suitable character style. So for the NPCs and the characters you can talk to, try to find something that would suit suit the style of this particular game. Right? Oh, let me just yeah. come out. I don't think I can drop this any lower. Okay, fine. Yeah, so something that would suit this particular style. Like the newest drawing. Yeah, it's uh I started off with just experiments and now I'm just kind of trying to find something that might might work. I like this one. This one's uh pretty cool looking. This one suits an interesting style. It's kind of cutesy, so it's not like... Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> so, yeah. I might go with this one. I like the way that looks. <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> is this for the player? No, this is for um, one of the general enemy NPCs. It's one of the, like, one of the phantoms, blob, you know, it's something, something unholy. Um, let's see. Let me actually open up Google Drive. Okay, so I have notes for this. There's a few enemies that I need to design. Uh, these enemies would be... Okay, so these enemies would be... Yeah, come on. Load up. Okay, so they would be. Boo, 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 doo, boo. Oh, here we go. Uh, citizen who's been drained of life. Okay, not this one. This is this one. Ghastly gown wearing apparition. Right, so these are kind of like half transparent, floaty enemies that. Um, well, actually, haven't really come up with their behavior pattern. So far, that's all they are. They just float around. 
<laughs> Haven't come up with the logic for them yet. It's just stupid. <laughs> okay, so besides this, we have these guys, which are pretty much going to be these our wraiths or the uh, the hollows. Poltergeist is just kind of simple. All I have to do is just spawn footprints on the floor, on the ground, as they walk by. Stalkers, invisible enemies who haven't quite managed to cross over to this realm. Uh, I got stuck in between. They walk around the realm the directions. Le oh, these ones. Leaving footprints until they find prey. When they see player, um, they up their pace. And the poltergeist can possess any physical objects and attack player if he gets close. So this is like possessed chests trying to eat you. Stuff like that. Um, now if they are, if they get spawned, or let's say if you manage to managed to get them out of the chest, what would they look like? Well, that's a good that's a good question. I mean we could probably make them look like something like this. Creepy enough. What have you been up to? I guess if I wanted to make it look more creepy, I'd probably want to go with more realistic-ish proportions, at least leaning in that direction. And it'd still probably be with giant hands, but, you know. Just made a game for a game jam with three people, with a team of three people. Nice! What what was the gem about? I'm thinking of starting to live stream on a schedule with these instead of just uh streaming you know willy-nilly. 
at least attempt see if it see if it works out what do you think what do you think of that try as best as I can to stick to a schedule you should do that because the thing is then with the schedule what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to work on several projects um, mainly so I could fill up the platform with content and get more than one project to have, you know, to make progress. So what a schedule would allow me to do is to do more than one live stream and um, work on more than one game and make progress on more than one game. Uh, and one of the projects is the Starsky project. That's the one that I've been working on the concept art that I think you saw me work. It was the abandoned, uh, abandoned business complex bit. Hmm. You know, these hands actually look a little too alien. Alright, thanks for dropping by, appreciate the company, alright, here we go, I can feel the music playing in the in the level. I could hear it and I can feel it. It's the feeling that the, the music invokes as it plays. I'm also thinking that I should uh, I should probably brush up on music theory for this project because to be honest, I'm finding my current skill set. kind of limiting hmm. <laughs> crazy vortex Welcome back. How's it going? Huh. Yeah, that's kind of weird. There's the chat. Good, do you remember me? I remember your username, so... I mean, that's as close as it gets. How's it going? What have you been up to? I 
Actually, no. I'll keep them bundled in here. Lots of school stuff. What kind of school stuff? What do you... What do you go to school for? <laughs> it's just a giant mouth. <laughs> mm, it's a... That's uh, a... <laughs> oof. Uh, computer engineering. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. That's right. How was that going, by the way? <laughs> oh, boy. I just drew a woman with a big mouth. What else is new? <laughs> Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm dumb. Got a job in your field? That would be awesome. <laughs> oh, boy. What if the phantoms didn't actually have heads? You know, it was just... Just the body. I mean, that's creepy enough. I think that would actually... Drive the point pretty well. Maybe even just like a torso with arms. That's all this. That's all the Phantom is. Just a torso with arms. Lots of interesting characters here. Mm hmm. Battle, what do you think about me starting to live stream on a schedule? Um, basically, just arranging on certain days, you know, maybe not every day of the week, but on certain days I'd be working on this project, on other days I'd be working on the Starsky project. I figured YouTube would be better. Um, right, so... Does YouTube actually show anything of the sort like uh, tabs? Are you using YouTube Gaming or just the regular YouTube for watching the live streams? So I want to know if there's any um, any sort of like tabloids or tabs or, or banners that you can put on, on YouTube so that I could post my schedule there, uh, my streaming schedule. You know how Twitch has the little banners under underneath the video. Very handy for uh, making announcements, posting schedules, and links and whatnot. Just normal YouTube. I see. Oh well. That's okay. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the phantom, this is the... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I guess it's gonna be the wraith. Uh, that's such a cringy character name. What was I thinking? <laughs> Change name. Uh, recently I read this article about um, how... 
all the cliches from like space voyage space journey games there's always going to be an enemy that's called the wraith <laughs> there's always going to be some like zero g level there's always going to be some glowy bit on a giant biological enemy right the enemy is going to be like a one-minded hive-minded creature right <laughs> just all the cliches and i'm like oh. <laughs> I can relate. Okay, so this is this guy's the hollowed one. Is it hollow or hollow? Hollow? No, I think hollow is like holy, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Hollow define honor. Okay, so hallowed ground means honor ground. So that that's what it is. So hollow is empty. Again, I'm gonna have to change the name. As far as even going with something like Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways. Okay. So, these guys are just gonna wander around. In abundance. Okay, so we got Poltergeist, Stalkers. Uh, stalkers are the invisible ones, so not a whole lot of work needs to be put there. Except for maybe, like, you know. Little footprints. Stalkers. Some creepy characters, good lord. Possessed wildlife, we already have that. Uh, and... Wraith. Passive boards. I think that's actually it for the... For these NPCs. Boars and wolves I already have. Uh, let's see, Wraith. Wildlife. Yeah. Interesting. How have the game dynamics uh, been going? Um. Well, it's um. I was working on a little like spur of a moment project called um, Light Flight. And I started with a prototype, which was fun to make. Uh, but at some point, it just kind of gotten very obvious that the, the entire game lacked idea. It lacked, you know, the, the thesis, so to speak, the, the one line, the elevator pitch, so to speak. It, it, there was no idea behind it. So at some point, it just kind of... It got to the point where I just saw that the core idea of the game would need a lot more work or at least just any work done on it before i could even continue with it so you know a prototype is a prototype it's already there i'll put it up on the website and um when or if i'll come back to it i'll come back to it at that point you know the, you can still learn quite a lot from it even as it is at that point um right now Right with all the footage, all the videos that I made on it, you can still learn quite a lot from it. For example, like networking and physics. So, you know, it's uh, it can pull off some useful stuff from it. Now with this project here, I'm not sure how I'm gonna pull off, or whether or not I should even pull off networking, because I had this idea for this one. It does have a story, it does have a narrative, it does have a campaign, but what I had an idea for it is that um, the idea was to randomize the crafting system in the game. So the general the general idea here is that all of these elements, right, the grass, the trees, the, the boulders, they're all made out of one 
type of material, right? And it's kind of like a light material. Uh, so you get that, and when you get it, it drops like a random, random item. And you have to research what that item does via experimentation. When I, whenever you start a game, or when you different people start the games, the recipes would be randomized. So you'd have to explore, uh, or you have to experiment with the different materials to find out exactly what each material is, what it does, and thus, you know, you get a general feeling of um, of what you need to use to make certain items. Right. The only thing is, I'm I'm kind of thinking if I should make some sort of a creative method of getting this material without destroying all of these, you know, all of these trees and whatnot. Because this isn't really the kind of game where I'm envisioning you being able to clear cut this entire forest. And you know, at some point, like I didn't really envision this being um a survival, you know, endless world, endless space, survival Minecraft type of deal of a game. I really was thinking of it more story based. And you see, if I'm gonna say that if you mine this rock and this rock disappears after you mine it, um then after a while you'll basically end up with this barren, empty land that would just be very boring to traverse, right? So I'm thinking maybe substitute these sprites with something like a like a hollowed out tree, right? Something with a marker on it without destroying the tree entirely. And then I can preserve my level design and level layout and whatnot. Right? That's at least what I'm thinking about it. Okay. Alright, I need to come up with some stuff that I can fill out the world with. Some Something interesting, you know, world building stuff, world designing stuff. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start a new, uh, new piece. It does look pretty cool. I've started working on this project, I think, half a year ago, if not more. And like, it was a very, very interesting project, but it again, it got to the point where I realized this really needs a story. I don't want this thing to be another Don't Starve. That's the main thing that I wanted to go for. I did like the whole Don't Starve 2D based 2D mix with 3D aesthetic, right? Where it's a 3D world with two dimensional um, with the with the two dimensional sprites. So. But I, I, I don't want it to be another survival game. Another just survival game, right? Uh, what happened to that game with all those things following you in the dark? Mm, the... I think you're talking about the Light Flight Project. The one where you, where you were in, like, zero gravity? I'm pretty sure, yeah, I think that, well, that's the last one that I was working on, so. It'll be this project. So, if this is the project that you're talking about, this is the, the project that I was saying where it got to the point where I realized that there was, there wasn't really any solid idea behind the project, right? This is the project you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's, um, well, yeah, that's basically what I'm saying, is that the, the project got to the point where 
I've I've reached the edge where a solid a solid idea would have effectively uh, filled out the uh, the sense of direction, or for me as a developer, right? Uh, after I reached this point here, it, it became really apparent that I have no sense of direction of where this project wants to go. So that's why I kind of like, yeah. Leave it for the moment, right? We got a battle. Battle extreme gravity here. Anyways. That's what it is. Okay. So I do have a story for this project. I do have a story. Um, the plot line. And I do have a general sense of direction with it. So I know exactly what needs to be made. And that's the project that I was talking about where there's already enough in the in the footage that I've recorded to actually be able to use as um, as study material. It's not a it's not a complete game by my standard or you know, by anyone's standard, but you can already learn enough from it. So um, I'll compile the live streams from that and put it up on the platform on the website. Um, and it will be available there. And, you know, if people will see that this is the sort of game idea they want to try out and maybe add something of their own, they can go ahead and, um, and uh, go over the course there. Another project that um, that I want to get underway with, alongside with this one, when I said that I wanted to make, um, ooh, sorry, train of thought. The project, when I was saying that I wanted to get on some sort of a schedule so that I'd be able to work on multiple projects, this is one of them. The second project is the, the project Starsky which is the one that I was working on the, the level designs for. Uh, and I think you may have been in, you may have dropped in those live streams. I made a lot of concept art for that project. Well, I mean, not nearly enough um, as I still need, or not nearly enough to get the project done. Uh, how long do donations take process? To be honest, um, they should be instantaneous. The only thing is that the notifications have been kind of, iffy so it might get processed but it wouldn't show up like right away right so i mean i can take a look at it but most like as you can see your comments are not even popping up in the in the chat which is kind of disheartening let's see what's this do 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 Okay. Try to get this stuff to work. And yet. Okay. Oh, it would probably just be easier if I add a whole new browser instance. Like that. Excuse the OBS logo. Okay. There's the notification for the chat ready. We'll say with 400. Height 600. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Setting up the stream. And as you can see, unless I'm an idiot and I'm actually streaming to the wrong. No, there's the. 
There's the thing. There's the comet. How long ago has it been? It, was it the one, the one that we were wondering if it was the same amount that it was supposed to be? Okay. Where it was like conversion or some display um, mix up. Come on, let me in. Let me in. Overlay. Pop up notifications. Oh well, that would that would explain it. Hey, I see it. One second. Let's see. Let's see if it pops up over there. <laughs> Man, it's like second time. I want this thing to be on record. I think you know what I think it is. Um, I think it's when you don't stream for a little while, the platform just assumes that you've stopped, and it closes all the, all the like references, all the connections to your widgets and stuff. Uh, At least that's kind of my speculation of what it does. Because I do have to reestablish these connections once in a while. So did you get a job in your field? Or is it, um, you know, like a part-time that you can pay for goodies and merchant stuff. Okay, beautiful. And I would like to alert box. Mm, I think they may have just changed the uh, the code for the alert box, so, you know, that's just something you have to keep up with. Alerts, here we go. Nope, <laughs> same exact code. Oh, well. It is what it is. Let me test this thing right now. Test follow. There's the thing that's working. And then if I go to the recent events, <laughs> come on. No. Really? Maybe it's because I just have it not set up. No, everything is uh, everything's enabled. Okay. Anyways, I uh, thank you. I see it. Uh, I love your hard work and determination on a small amount, but it helps. Yep, it does. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the sauce, as my younger brother calls his donations. 
that's uh, that's awesome. Okay, all right. Let's not rub hands together while my pen is my palm. That's the only pen I have. Okay. So there's one thing about this particular game is that when the player wakes up for the first time, uh, he would actually have to go through an abandoned settlement called uh, the Lamplight. And it's kind of like a little reference to the little lamplight in uh, from Fallout 3. What's his channel? Uh, Luxarix. Uh, here, I'll, I'll type it in. Yeah, the guy just recently went through surgery. And he's like... Gaming is all he has right now. <laughs> it's not like super serious surgery, but it's still kind of like... Yeah. Not nice. Actually, let's, let's make that a standard... Uh, let's see, a standard lantern. An oil lantern. Or I guess in that case a crystal lantern, because everything runs on crystals in this game. Hmm, yeah, you know, I'll just do it like that. Okay, so I'm just looking for things that I can fill the level with. Just some random things here and there. Gotta write a paper. Alright, man. Good luck with the paper. Thanks for the donation. Hope to see you uh, in another live stream. Okay, just random level building things. You know what's the weirdest thing? If I test the donation, it will actually show up the donation. It shows up as the test one. Ooh. Jesus. It is 10 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? Right, but, if, but if I go to... Gonna be the entire live stream, just me trying to <laughs> troubleshoot this thing. Ah, oh, boy, so weird. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. We'll just have to. Uh, we'll just have to figure it out at a later point. Okay. So something, something loose and quick and I think I need to I need to do some research for research we're gonna be using Chrome okay browser's guest perfect okay forest forest game forest gump um, 
abandoned forest, although the term abandoned forest is kind of weird. Hmm, that's cool. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> Everything else here looks amazing. This is really cool. What makes a forest abandoned? Okay, there definitely aren't going to be any cars in this game. But I guess something like... Something like brick structures wouldn't be too uncommon. Some old, broken, destroyed brick. Maybe even like a pile of rubble. Pile of rubble scum. I should also, even though I'm not going to be using these assets, I should also try to keep the base of the of the item more or less flat, so that. Um, it would look like, or it wouldn't look like it's either floating off the top, just above the surface, as some of these assets actually do look like that. I need to make the bottoms pretty much almost flush against the, the ground. Otherwise, you can actually see how they're, they don't seem like they're making contact with the, with the grass, with the ground. Right, so for example this tree right here, especially that tree. Uh, okay, maybe that one more or less. I know that there is an asset. L this one right here. You can see I can actually walk up to it. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see, so right there, you see how they're the, the ground plane is actually touching. So that makes sense. This does not. Right? This here, more or less, it's kind of iffy. So I need to keep the ground's plane very firm. It's kind of important. Okay.
Okay, no, that looks... Uh, no, that looks a little, a little too modern. It is supposed to be another type of a... Of a lamp slash lantern um, pole. This pole is giving off some ruby gloom um, vibes. But I do like that Victorian style to it. All right. In fact, maybe we'll make it just a touch less vertical. Okay, let's uh, let's look at some some other stuff. <laughs> this is really cool. Abandoned bus. What would possess someone to abandon a bus? <laughs> Abandoned forest map. All trees? I mean, I have these trees. I'm not sure how tall trees would really work here. I could technically pull it off. I could technically make it work. It would definitely make for an interesting level transition. Alright, we've got low trees and then tall trees later on. Could be. I could make a tiled. Well, okay. Tiled textures are a bit of an iffy thing to pull off in Game Maker Studio 3D. I um, think you have to lay, you, blah, you actually have to make a shader um, that would repeat the texture. Unless I. Yeah, it would have to be done in the shader, but eh, well, maybe it wouldn't be so hard. Um, I would probably just want to... Oh, there's a house. That's where I wanted to go. Uh, it would probably just have to be... I like this effect. The fact that uh, you can actually place cursors in three-dimensional space. This is really cool. Um, what was I saying? Damn it, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, if it would be a tall tree, it would be a very tall 3D object. And then I would just have to scale the, uh, the vertical texture map coordinate. Although, see, once again, I don't think it would work because I think I, need, I would need to get into instancing for the texture. I don't think it would work. It would just like stretch the top and it would just be um, like a, it would look like a buffered texture. It would just be a very short texture and then the last few pixels would just be repeated. I th think. I think that's what would happen. <laughs> Not entirely 100% on it. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. What else can we do here? 
You know, like sunken tree root or like tree branches. Something like this. And this is where I'm saying by keeping a single plane, that would help. <laughs> Abandoned house. <laughs> uh. Maybe having a cave level or something like a cave level would be a pretty cool idea oof look at these these are beauties who would have abandoned these cars like that not for this particular project but just that looks really cool oh that's pretty cool do you think there are any more undiscovered abandoned tanks from world war and I mean like undiscovered Right, just sitting there in the forests, wasting away, ready for them, for some young engineer to drop by and kickstart the engine. What in God's name? That looks like the Jurassic Park dinosaur themed amusement park. I thought that looked like a dinosaur. Abandoned forest farming simulator. Is farming simulator a horror game now? This looks like straight out of the Stalker game. An abandoned chair. Probably just be sticking out of the ground like this. It's half a chair. That's what this is. Although, something that would look really cool is if it was like a cracked chair, not just half of it. Yeah. I think it would be a nice, nice touch. 
interesting little interesting little snippet even if I do something like this There we go. That's pretty cool. Something like this would actually also be an interesting house to put to put in the game. Maybe an occasional like, occasional chapel. I think I'm actually even using this whoop using this image. Uh, or I used to use this image on the older version of the website. And I was using it for the remnant project, which is a app game kit um, engine project. This thing is not a very tall building. Hmm, now, should this make it in the game? Or should I maybe do something more like, let's see, more along the lines of, uh, 
do some structure. Okay, and it would be like a half destroyed. rotten away wooden structure like this I think I remember making something of the same sort in uh, for gaming studio when I was making my first uh, when I was making my first tutorial on how to import 3d models into game maker studio something like this something you can you know you can walk past maybe even walk into in which case if I can walk into it I should probably make it I should probably make it out of individual broken up pieces like this wall that wall this wall and these two small walls would have to be individual pieces because then it would be a lot easier to figure out collisions for them. And it's not like I'm going to be going for full-on collisions. Or polygon collisions. I'm actually going to go with the simplified, you know, basic collisions, so to speak. Something, something very rudimentary. It's only going to be using a two-dimensional plane. As you can see, there isn't... There isn't a hell of a lot of terrain uh, going on in this particular project, so everything is on a flat plane. So in this case, I don't have to figure out collisions, uh, and what I can use, I can just use that plane to figure out whether or not the player is actually clashing into uh, a tree. Cool. All right. Now, for every one of these, I'd probably want to make maybe two or three versions uh, when I'm actually creating the artwork. So, you know, I could have maybe several versions of that, several versions of this brick foundation thing, right? Several versions of that. Maybe not so much of this, you know. Like this right here is actually probably a version of that. So I can lump it together. What else? A broken shovel? Mm-hmm. 
That was horrible, I'm sorry. Do, 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 do. I gotta finish, or I gotta continue working on the script to know to know what it is that I need to create. I mean, for one, for one, I know that. Um, let's see, these are these are not enemies. These are going to be level assets. Okay, so forest items. Okay, so for example, I know that there's going to be a point in the game where the player will have to go to through a town called Lamplight. I keep wanting to call it Little Lamplight, just like in Fallout. It's such a great name. Okay, so there will probably have to be like a broken sign. like this and it would it would probably have to say something like well it would say lamplight obviously but it would say in, in like some weird paint color okay this brush would not be very good because it does all kinds of strange stuff. Here we go. Lamp light. But not like that, to be honest. I want it to be more like... This is something like this. Maybe even do something something funny like like this they didn't get enough they didn't put enough space Something like this. I think it would work. As a matter of fact, what I'm envisioning is this you know, behind a tree.
And then we have an entrance. Uh, the entrance. The entrance would be on a bridge. I'm not sure how I would make the bridge. If I keep everything on the same on the same plane that I might be able to pull her off that way. But it would be nice if we could actually go up and down on this bridge. Okay. Anyway, so as you can see, now I know I have to make that bridge, right? And actually, I don't really like this tree being in the front. Okay, maybe make nice tall nice tall uh, fence obviously it wouldn't be it wouldn't it wouldn't go straight through it wouldn't be like this perfectly even fence it would be more like more like a jerry rig makeshift looking kind of weird sort of fence. I also have a feeling that I might have to make a more intuitive level editor for this just so that I could place these items better. If anything, I mean, to be honest, the Game Maker um, level editor I can technically use it to make levels, as I did with this particular demo. The only problem with that... Level Valley. So, if we take a look at this level, you can see I there's the house, you know, there's the grass, boulder, bushes, and, you know, we've got trees, trees... Where, where are they? Yeah. Trees, 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 flowers, flowers, trees, yada, yada, yada. But it's not like up to scale. It's, you can't really gauge in how far something is with this particular level. Which is why I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, I'm going to have to make some sort of a level editor so that I can really build my levels inside of this and I'd probably have to export the level data uh, probably into yeah probably either an e file or maybe a data structure DS list or DS grid or something like that probably DS grid and uh, yeah Loading up the level will essentially load up the DS grid. Um, and who knows, maybe... You see, if we're saving to a DS grid, that that will actually give us the ability to save which of the items have been mined and, and scoped. Since we're loading the level from the DS grid, we might as well save whatever items we have already mined into the same DS grid. Right? Makes sense. Makes sense to me. So, yeah. We're going to have to make our own level editor. Okay, now... You see, with this thing here... I kind of wanted to make like a... Like a pit... Of some sort. You know, 
like a dug up pit, and we're probably just gonna make sure the player can't fall through it. Level locations. Lamplight. <laughs> you know, this ravine, this ravine thing is kind of, kind of meh. And if it's mad, then so is the bridge. Then so is this whole thing. That whole idea was kind of meh. Okay. Let's try something else. Let's try something with the horizon line. Alright, so we're going to say there's a few bushes. Right, and there's the fence. It's all about the visual style of it. I didn't really like what it was. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. And with that said, there's going to be a couple of houses. Gotta make sure we have some trees. Alright, so we'll come up with the layout for this later on. So we have our lamplight, at least the entrance part of it, so we, we, we get a feeling for the, w the way the entrance is supposed to look like. Alright, we've got a couple of bushes. And then you get the entrance here. Now if we're going to scale this up to be up to scale with the proportions of the rest of the level. This is actually the point where I probably want to move this a little bit off to the side. Like this. And while I... whoops. While I have the opportunity... I'll move this to a separate layer.
Beautiful. Okay, so I think that actually fits fairly well with the general aesthetic of the level design, level layout. Ah, gonna compile this thing. Yeah. Then walking into la lamplight, little lamplight. <laughs> Past the bushes. No. Enter the buildings, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. Okay. Okay, well, I think this should be more or less enough for today. I'll work on the script and then I'll know what it is that I still need to design. Alright? Okay.